Okay, so I will be talking about chapter three, the power of caring. So an overview of this chapter, um, it basically talked about how caring um, is centered around the idea that teachers must know their students and build relationships with each and every single one of their students in order for the classroom to be successful um, and in a way for it to be culturally responsive. If a teacher does not know the student or any of the students or just one or two, in general, the classroom is not going to be successful. So something that I kind of thought of is that you have to know every student by name, strength, and need. You can't just know their name and know a fun fact about them. You must know their name, something they are really passionate about that's their strength, and something that they really need to work on or maybe something that emotionally is troubling to them. So students who feel cared for are going to obviously work harder for, this, for the teacher. Um, they respect the teacher, and then at the end of the day, they want to please them. They want to do everything they can to be successful for that teacher, which then makes the students actually want to work harder so that they're successful. So building that relationship will also encourage the students to take ownership of their learning. When students take ownership of their learning, they will be driven to be successful and work harder and stay focused. So it's just this big circle. If the teacher has a relationship with the students, the students feel cared for, which then leads the student to want to be successful for their teacher. And it's just one big success bubble. So then um, talking about the connection between bilingual and a teacher relationship, um, it is proven that a children's relationship with parents and teachers significantly contribute to their bilingual language skills. So if there is a high quality teacher child relationship, um, they are more likely to have more language skills because think about it, they're talking with their teacher, they're building more language skills and they're wanting to communicate with their teacher. If that teacher doesn't have a relationship with that student, why on earth would that student wanna to talk to that teacher? They're not going to build any more language. So the more you build that relationship, the more they're gonna be willing to talk to you and build that language. Talking about relationships between teacher and students, continuing relationships between teacher and student is the heart of education. It talks about that for quite a bit. Um, if a student feels like the teacher cares about them, they're more likely to open up to that teacher. This comes into play when a student is struggling. So for example, I had a student who is struggling in my class with main idea and they usually felt very embarrassed about coming up or asking for a small group or raising their hand. But after building that relationship with the whole class and making it known that it's okay to come up to me and ask for help, that student felt more comfortable coming to me after I built that relationship. If I did not buy, build that relationship, that student would have never come up to me and asked for help. They would have just sat there and they wouldn't have ever gotten it. They would have just maybe gotten by, passed through, or they would have failed the subject um, if I hadn't built that relationship. On the other side, if a teacher and student have a connection, the teacher will most likely be aware of when a student is struggling, just based on their behavior or the words that they're using. You know exactly when some of those students are upset because they've made that one motion that just lets you know something's not okay, I need to go talk with that child. So knowing your student and then in return they knowing you, it's just going to build a better relationship and allow you to communicate with them and they communicate with you. And in return, that helps their learning. So we also need to make sure that we have student voice being heard. Um, if the teacher is talking all the time, students do not feel like they have a place in the classroom. So silence is an option um, for teachers. Uh, making sure that they are communicating with their peers and building relationships. Um, through academics with their peers. And it's not just teacher-student related. It's also building it with the students in their class and allowing for them to talk to each other. Um, again, um, we have to allow the teachers to stop talking and for allow the students to talk and lead the conversation of the class. It allows them to express themselves in a safe way and be able to make mistakes and us to correct them here so then when they go out into the real world, they feel comfortable 
and they feel successful when speaking to others. Um, so this also gives them an opportunity to hear other people, people's perspectives. So maybe one student saw a topic one way and they saw it another way. Well, they can compare and contrast. Well, they might have gotten the same answer, but they got there in different ways and they can see different perspectives, which is good for all people to see as well. It's a good skill to have. Warm demander was one of um, the more empowering ideas that I read about. Um, a warm demander is a teacher who is caring and builds relationships with all of her students or his students, but also sets high demands and expects all students to follow them. So it's that teacher that you know will do anything for you and will protect you, but if you don't come to class prepared or you're disrespectful, they let you know, and that's not acceptable. Um, so setting those expectations and ensuring that the students follow them um, and holding them accountable to those expectations is key. Not allowing those kids to slip through the cracks or get by with bad behavior. So as their teacher is going to love them and support them, they're also going to push them to do harder. They're going to be strong and demanding and they're not going to let them just pass through. You're going to expect success from them. Um, so an example I have is this is a community circle I did earlier in the year. I set my community circle expectations. Um, we take turns talking. Um, we let students respond clockwise. We encourage others. We lead by example. We're prepared. We try new things. We, expre we express ourselves um, and be who we truly are. We are open to others' ideas. I do not allow students to talk over each other. Um, I do not allow students to use unkind words or actions. Um, I do expect them to listen to each other with their whole body. Their eyes are on the speaker. And if you're not following that, we stop the lesson and we correct that behavior right then and there. Um, I set these expectations and the kids follow them. As soon as they don't follow them, we reteach it. Or a student has to reset and figure out how to better set those expectations so that we're, we're, we are respectful to our student, um, to our peers and to each other, or maybe it's to me. Um, this is just an example of a community circle. I have these pride expectations because that's what my school uses as pride. Um, I set these expectations with every lesson, every activity. If it's a turn and talk, I've got expectations just like these. It allows them to respectfully share with each other, share with me. They know how to behave. We go over these at the beginning of the year and we just set those expectations. Um, but at the same time, I'm allowing them to share. I want them to communicate with me. Community Circle is a fun time that each one of them has an opportunity to share. I get to share. We get to have a conversation. Kids ask each other questions. Um, and it's a great way for me and for them to get to know each other. But at the same time, we're also learning how to communicate with each other, and I'm setting those high expectations. There have been several times where a student has had to stop, regroup themselves, and then join our circle after they have fixed their behavior, um, just so that they're respectful for, to their peers. So in conclusion, it's important for a teacher to build a relationship with every single one of their students. Students who feel connected and appreciated by their teacher and the other classmates are also going to be supported in their efforts through school. Their behavior is going to be better. Their academics are going to be better solely because you have built that relationship. It is super simple to get to know your kids. Why on earth would you not do this simple thing and not expect success coming out of it? It just, it makes sense to do it. Um, one of the articles I used um, is represented right here. Um, it's relationships um, based on bilingual preschool children. It was a research article. Um, you're more than welcome to look that up. I talked about it um, in slide five. Um, thank you. This was about the power of caring for chapter three, chapter critique.